Hello everybody and welcome back to the Bell Country Chronicle Weekly. Now I'll be sure, today I'll be showing you how to make these pumpkins. This one is made with a far weight that came with my Centro knitting machine. And these others are medium weight number fours and that's what I'm using today. I do recommend these um all these this one's very hot because this hammer I like to use it on my machine, it works really good. Um, and then, as you notice, they have stuffing hole. they have little holes in them. This one's tight, um, but I'm going to be making one like this, except I'm going to be using a lighter yarn. But, what you need to make these, they're super easy, they don't take a lot, but you will need some stuffing, definitely. And you're not going to need a lot, I mean, a few ounces though, just enough to stuff them. You can stuff them however you want, make them as big as you want, but anyway, I'll show you how to, let's get into what you need. Oh, I'm trying to do that right. Okay, so, you're going to need your Centro knitting machine. Mine isn't, has suction cups in the bottom, but it won't stick to it, so. I'm trying to get into this picture if you can see it, okay? Okay, I think you can see it. Okay, now, here's the yarn guide, here's the yarn um, tension holder, and I'm going to be using the tightest tension, not the tightest, but the tight tension, not the tightest. Um, so right here, there's three of them, it's the loosest, here's the loose medium loose and tight is what i call them but anyway you're gonna need some stuffing this is probably all you need it's the mess but you can make your pumpkins as big as you want and yeah but anyway here is the yarn that i'm using it's a little lighter it's um i love this yarn from hobby lobby it's lighter but the other one was um red heart super saver and yeah but this is kind of tangled so yeah and i'm just using this as a medium weight number four and if you don't know this when you go to the store you want to look for one that says a four on the label i don't have the label to this right now so yeah i'm reusing this though and you're also going to need Scissors. I'm just using these, but you want them sharp enough to cut yarn. Um, I like to use these Fat Crayola um, markers and or pens or anything, as long as you have something just to help with the hole. To okay, so when you make, you'll see in a while when you go to make them, then. You want to be able to fit this through the hole, at least have it a little bit bigger than this. So that's why I, when I do it like that, especially when you're doing the um, bumps on them, it's really helpful. But you don't have to if you don't want to. Anyway, I have this crochet hook that came with it. It's a 3.75 millimeter. If you know how to crochet, you have crochet hooks. Um, this is actually a an F hook in crochet. So, if you have any F hooks and you don't have this, or if you're just like, they just didn't have one, then you can use that, or you can just go somewhere and get it. You don't have to have it necessarily, um, it's optional, but it would, like, just in case you drop a stitch, you get the best. Then I have this big needle, the biggest one it came with. If not, you can use another needle, but make sure it's big enough. And here's one, it's kind of bent. I didn't mean to do that, but that was my fault. Um, but it's a little smaller one, not very sharp, but it still could hurt if you stepped on it. And I just thought, you know, you really need it for putting the lines on. It's best to have this one instead of the bigger one. You can use the bigger one, but I like to use the smaller one. Now I'm going to show you how to make it. So when I put start out, um, I like to have it facing me. You want to, but before you put the star casting on, of 
course, uh, I don't know if you know how this gas one, but I'm going to show you anyway. And you just roll to the white needle, and you stop right there. If you can see, it shows 48 right there. Don't un run my little book. Wow. Scratch it, or whatever. Sorry. But this is a little white needle. You're going to roll right to it. Sit right there at the yarn guide. And you're going to take your yarn. I like to put it on the floor. Uh, not too far of a distance away, though. And I, you want to try to find the end of your yarn, but this is a super easy, I recommend it as a beginner pattern. And yeah, I know you guys have been waiting to see me make this. I know I posted today something, um, but this is my very first video. I know it's not fall and it's still actually kind of wintry, but I mean, it's good for a first video and I really like making pumpkin so this is pretty much just like to see if people like it you know so yeah anyway you're going to take the end of your yarn if your yarn is tangled in any way you want to take time and untangle it and you can just pause the video and untangle it and then go back to it but you're going to take the end of your yarn like this and you're going to need a lot of yarn you'll see at the end and you're just going to wrap wrap it around a lot like 10 to 15 times or more possibly you just want to get a lot not too much just a lot then you're going to drop it down in the center and you're going to put your yarn over the front of the needle in front of it then you're going to take it and you're going to roll go behind the next and front off the next behind front off Behind, front of, behind, front of, behind. As you can see, my knitting machine is kind of, well, it might need to grease. I don't have grease for it, so sorry. If I did, then I would have put it on. But, so in front of, behind, in front of, behind. And that's how you cast on. In front of, behind, in front of, behind. To twist it like this. I don't know if you can see it in the video. And you just kind of keep rolling it like this. If yours is a good shape, I just good luck. But okay, so my row counter while I'm casting on, I'm gonna talk to you. My row counter does not work. It works, just not good, not right. It works not right. Does not work right. And it, yeah, but if yours doesn't right, work right, then there are ones on Amazon you can get, and they're pretty good, which they work, and they're not bad at all. I've never tried one or got one before, but future video I might. And if yours works, then lucky you. Congratulations. Okay, back to it now. The, we've cast it on all the way around. I don't know what that means, but I have. <laughs> and you put it in the yarn guide and make sure it gets into this little, I don't know, thing here. Make sure it gets into it or you will have missed stitches. But we're going to put it on the tight tension, which is the one closest to the machine. And you can definitely do this on an Addy knitting machine if you wanted to. This is a 48 needle, by the way, so, yeah, but, oh, I forgot to mention, you're going to want to, so you have one this, I don't know if you can see, right here, you see you have tube and panel mode. You're going to want it on the tube panel mode, because if you don't, then it is going to... What I'm trying to say is that it's going to stop you at a certain peg, which is about uh, somewhere around here. And it's going to want to make a panel, which is just a flat panel. It's not a tube. Um, you may already know that, but you want to have it on 
sorry if you hear any background noise, but um, you might have it, um, like, you just want to have it on tubular mode, okay? Anyway, anywho, then, uh, well, on the needles, on the last pink needle before the white needle, it should be behind it. If not, you might have to go back and redo it, but that's okay. Um, practice makes progress. So now you're just gonna wind it, and like, and you just keep winding. Now you can use a drill. This is just a paint can lid with a notch cut in it, and I put tape on it. And you got some bolt screws and washers. A bolt screw, uh, no, a bolt and some washers, and it works. You put it on the handle, and then it runs it for you, in which it is way faster, although I don't like to run mine fast because I'm afraid that I'm going to break it, and it's the only one I have, and I probably have only had this, not this thing, it's only been about a month. Not even a month yet, and I don't want to break it. So I'm just going to be using my hand because I like to use my hand actually. Although that was a good try. And the battery on that thing probably needs charged, so yeah. But you're just going to keep on rolling. And you just keep rolling. See, my counter kind of works, but not good enough to use. Now, once I get it, it rolls so much. So I'm gonna roll so much, I'm not gonna roll it all the way. There is no set amount. You can do it however you want. Although, um, I'm gonna pause this video real quick and I'll come back to you once I have so much done. So I'll see you in a second once I have so much done. Okay, so this is a perfect example as to why you definitely want to untangle your yarn. Um, as you can probably see right here, I'm trying to make sure you can see it. It's stuck. Yeah. So I'm trying to go back. And it has a knot in it. And it's stuck. So you're going to want to pull that. Oh, we can't. But I just want to say, yeah. That's why you want to untangle your yarn. Just to say, if you want to watch and it can get stuck in there and you have to put the yarn and tie it back together, which is not good. Because, yeah. And you just go like this. It's not really not that hard. And you just put it back in place. But I think I've got enough so I can show you. I'm going to get back to the white needle and the round. So I'm just going to do that. But. Anyway, you want to, you don't have to stop at the white needle, but it really doesn't matter right now. But you want to take this tail yarn we left and pull it, and it should do this. And which, this is how I do it to figure out how big I'm, my pumpkins are going to be. Now, don't pull it until it's like, yeah, you don't want to pull it too much. And we're going to stretch it out at the end, so it's going to be bigger. That's why I'm showing this. And you just keep rolling like this until you get it to the size that you want. Plus, you're going to stretch it out. And it's going to get a little, it's going to be a little bit bigger than you want it to be. Probably bigger or smaller. Probably bigger, though. Um, really? I'm not sure, but it depends. And you left to this long bit of yarn for a reason. I will tell you at the end, you're probably wondering why still and it's me might have figured it out but it's okay and you just keep rolling just keep rolling okay. and it really isn't that hard you just get it once you get it cast on you're rolling it's really not that hard but my so i don't know why but it's always my favorite part at the end when you're um using your needle i don't actually already know how to cast off but you pick up the stitch, the um, loops. That's always my favorite part. It's so relaxing. I don't know why. I always just loved it. 
And once I got her off the machine, lines were my least favorite part. But, I mean, back on to it. Sorry, I was getting into story time. <laughs> uh, no. I don't know why. I don't know why. But, once you get so much, you can just pull not too much. You don't want to stretch it out too much. Because you don't want to be able to see it in the this but that was only because um oh shoot it was only because um something it was oh yeah i put too much something in it and then once you put the lines on it stretches it out but it's still pretty and then a mistake i made which wasn't really my fault was a cup a row or two right here you can see this line it got loose the yarn came out of the tension holder for about a row and then i by the time i got it row done i realized and yeah but really that's just an accident it's just it's just the nature of it so i mean there's nothing you can really do about it unless you watch it really intently so yeah there's nothing you can really do about that but Anyway, I'm going to pause this video, and then, um, so, like, okay, so, I'm going to roll some more, and then, uh, I'll come back when I get so much, and, yeah, we'll talk. See you in a second. Okay, so I've done a few more rows, and, yeah, so you see it looks a little looser now. And you just take it, the piece of yarn from the bottom, and you just pull it. And it should be loose enough, but it may be tight, look tight, but you're going to roll some over. You're going to make some more rows, and it's going to it's gonna even out, and it won't be as loose. So I'm going to show you that right now. So you're just going to keep, like, rolling it like this. And sometimes you can even, okay, so I forgot to say this tip at the beginning. When you are, jeez, I forgot it, um, right, I remember it now. So, when you get a new skein of yarn, and you're going to use it, then you may want to pull a lot of yarn out until the inside is a little loose, and you've used some yarn up, where you can see through it, there's a little hole, and you, it may, it'll be easier, because it'll, the yarn inside will be looser, and it'll pull out better. Mine's already been used enough to do that, plus it's really soft yarn, and I've never used this. Um, kind of except for on this orange one, but I recommend using Red Heart Super Saver. Oh, and this one, I'm sure is Crafter Secret. The red one is. And then I have a dark green that's Crafter Secret. It's really dark. Like, a, like it's not like this, but it's dark. Like, um, I don't know how to explain it, but it's really, it's pretty, but I mean, it wouldn't. I'm not sure how it would look like it. It'd be like a really emerald, dark emerald green, like a jade green or something. Or something, something like that, but I'm not sure. Anyway, you just want to watch for knots, and if you feel this pull up, like, if you might have a knot, like, here, let me demonstrate. So if you have a knot like this, and you go like this, and it gets pulled up like this, you want to stop and just pull it. Like, don't, you want to pull it out of the tension holder, but if it, if you already know it's like a slip knot or something, then you just want to pull it out and put it back in the tension holder. So then, there you go. It's easy. Um, yeah. So I'll come back to you once I get some more done. Okay, so I didn't have to do much more and it's already getting saggy. Even if you pull on this more, it's saggy down in and yeah. So that's just about when you want to take it off. But you can make it more like this. Just make it looser. It really doesn't take a lot to make it looser in the middle. Only a few rows though. Isn't it? See, it's getting looser as I'm rolling. So, yeah. That's pretty good for a pumpkin. And then I just like to see kind of sometimes. I don't usually do it anymore. But you can just see how much of this you would need for it. Like, this is how much about you need for it. And you can just look under the machine. And see if that's too much or not, not enough. Be 
because you can just, you know, like, just check, you know, it's whatever. Oh, and by the way, acrylic yarns work best. In my opinion, they work best, but anyway, I mean, so you can see it's really drowsy, and I'm about to take it off. I think I am. It might turn out a little smaller. Probably like this one. Um, but anyway, I'm going to go all the way to the white needle. You want to stop right at the white needle, like where we began. I told you to stop at the white needle. That was before we stopped. We began. Now we're gonna. I'm gonna show you how to cast off. So you're gonna take your yarn out of the tension holder, leave it in the yarn guide right now, for now, and you're gonna cut a good amount of yarn, not too much, not like down there, because this you're gonna need definitely. But this really, you're only gonna need, like, at least make sure it can go all the way around here. Like, kind of, like, kind of measure. You can take it out of the yarn guide and just measure around, kind of like, I don't know how to measure, like, kind of like this, if you can. And it's okay if you get extra. So I'm gonna cut mine about this much and I like to um yeah but you don't need your yarn anymore for now that I know of because I'm trying to remember it and I now that's out of the yarn guide so the yarn you want it to be in front of this white needle and drop it just right there in front and you're going to wind all the way around only once if you do it twice you're probably gonna have to start all the way over I know, but it, you just only, you're gonna go slow and stop back at the white needle. But just go slow and really do not, yeah, just keep slowly. Now roll with me and I'll show you. So you just wanna roll really slow and watch. You don't wanna go past that white needle, like in between the white needle and the needle that's before the white needle. See, cause this will come off. And then it'll be drop stitches, which is why you don't do that. And you can just um, even do this and go back. And you can even do this at the 45th stitch needle. So I like to do something like this. And I pull it down here. I'm going to go back a bit. Hold down that 45th because you don't want the drop stitches. And then I like to grab... My big needle, because you're definitely use it for this. You can use a smaller needle, but a big needle works way better. It's easier to pick up the stitches. Um, it's it's way easier. Now, if you had a smaller yarn, like a really thinner yarn, then maybe a smaller needle. It actually came with smaller needles. They were plastic like this, but just like a little shorter. And the aisle on them was a little smaller. But anyway, you're going to want to pick up that the loop that's on the white needle, pick it up first and take it off the needle and pull it. So then that's when you pull it tight, see, and it holds it, holds it like that. And then you're going to go clockwise all the way around and you go like this. Now it may feel tight trying to pick up these stitch loops, I mean, but you just get like you might get it three at a time at first. But once you get start getting so many, it'll loosen up around and it'll be easier to get more. And you can just do this so then you don't have to go like all the way around the table. And you just turn it as you're going. Um, it's easy. So you just pick up these stitches like this. And it's really easy. It, it, I, this is my favorite part to do. <laughs> I'm just like, once I get to this, I was always so fascinated in doing this. I don't know why. It was always just so fascinating. And I always have my thumb up here to keep them, the loops that I pick up from coming back off and dropping stitches. And which, I've gotten better at this. I used to do use waste yarn and do the, that method, but now I like doing this. But, for actually, for the hat method, oops, see, I dropped the loop. I dropped the stitch. It's okay. It's only one stitch. But, you do like if you've dropped a few, more than one stitch or more than at least two stitches if it's 
more than two stitches you dropped, you don't want to fix that. Uh, I don't, like, I don't, this method, you drop more loops, probably. You can use the waste yarn method, but I've only dropped one loop so far, and one time on these pumpkins, I only dropped one loop. It just depends. And if you've done this a lot, then, and it depends. It, everybody does it different. You may be doing the same thing I'm doing right now, but you haven't dropped a loop yet. That was my mistake. It's just the way it is. It's the nature of it. And everybody. And it's really easy. See, I just picked up more loops. See, I had to pick up three loops at first around here because it was tighter and it was harder to pick them up. But now it's looser, it's easier to pick them up. And you just keep picking them up like this. It's really easy and I love doing it. It's fun. I don't know why it's fun, but I just kind of... See, if you pull up them loops, see that caught it. So you pick up the loop, hold it tight, don't let any other loops come off, and you don't want to pull up like this, because then the next loop on there is going to fall off, and more and more will fall off. So, just keep that in mind, and be careful, because you don't want, you don't want your work to be all completely done for. I mean, this is, this is still work, you know, so, yeah. But anyway, I'm getting dramatic, sorry. I'm just going to pick up these rest of the loops. And it looks like, a new, like I've got loops on the end of the needle. But anyway, you just pull it all the way through and you got a sack. Now we don't need our knitting machine anymore. So you're just going to, so you're just going to set it down. I'm just gonna set mine down here where my yarn is. Um you can just set it aside anywhere. Now, I'm gonna show you how to do this. Um so you're you were more a lot of you were probably wondering what um why we left a long tail at the beginning, a really long tail. Well that's for putting the lines on. I don't know if you can see this, but see that little yarn? That was this left on there. And this is where the hole is going to be. So you want to make sure, even if you can't fit it through there, work your way into it, you know. I'll show you that in a minute. But right now we're doing the second part. Now when you take it off your machine, you're going to want to see right there's where I dropped a stitch. Which is okay. It's only one. And it's going to be on the inside. You want that loop on the... If you drop a stitch, you want this loop that was missed you want it on the inside you can't see it you, nobody's gonna know it's only one and if you had it all the way around that's really okay it's okay but I mean you can just practice on it like make a couple row or a few rows practice on it these are really good for beginners but when you take it off your machine you're gonna want to stretch and it's gonna become bigger a bit longer like it just helps straighten it out because before we hadn't um if we just rolled it and hadn't pulled this together it wouldn't be stretched out already which this is just to make sure it's stretched but anyway this looks like a little toddler hat or kid hat anyway you're gonna see how it's curling at the top sorry i got loud but this is so soft <laughs> i mean like this is babies could probably beat you make like a beat a little one for babies like it's this big like a one that's like this this big I don't know but just one that's small for them to play with and I also today just finished a making a little lovey bear it's so cute um I would show you but we're making stuffing not bears okay so get your stuffing if not you can substitute it with like you have old pillows, you can take the stuffing out of them. You don't have to have it straight from the store. I mean, you can just substitute with anything that you think would work. Really, um, stuffing works way better. You should stuff it. Oh, and these are not for outdoors unless... I would not recommend putting them outdoors, and I would not recommend making them out of cotton, though. 
My machine does not work good with cotton, so. Yeah. But anyway, you want to fluff your stuffing. Stuffing is best, and I, I recommend you use it. But yeah. Anyway. I just like to fluff it like this because sometimes they're going to get down, especially if kids are playing with them. But anyway, this is what I do. Now, if you hadn't pulled this, you really don't have to, it's not necessary, but you will at the end. Now, if you hadn't and this was still wide like this, then you would have, and it was, it would still be probably stretched out. And you would have gone like this and pulled it. And it would have looked more like this. And then you would have pulled this tight. But anyway, you still have this on your needle. You don't need it on your needle right now. So we're just going to pull this tail and kind of tighten it up a bit because this is where you're putting your stuff in. So you might want to leave it big, a bigger hole to stuff, stuff some stuffing in. This one I'm not going to stuff a lot because I don't want too much. Just You want just enough to fill it. You want a little extra, not too extra because if you do... You don't want it and it could yeah so it's okay but you can always open it back up i mean not always but before you before you get the other two so you just kind of close it up a bit and stuff some in there grab some stuff it in there so i think this is enough especially it's gonna so when you put lines on it it's going to stretch out a bit which is okay if it shows it. It's okay. And you want a little extra. But it's okay. So now I just have this little... It's probably going to turn out like this one. It may look a little bigger, but trust me, it's going to change. Now look at the difference. This one's darker, this one's lighter. This is I Love This Yarn, this is Red Heart. I like I Love This Yarn. Red Heart, I went out sh shopping. Compul Compul I spent $85 on yarn. Most of it was Red Heart. Pretty much 90... 95% of the yarn was Red Heart. And the other 5% was other brands. Smaller, other brand, Walmart brands. And I got a little bit of Premier. It was in there. So that's the only thing I got. But anyway, I like to take my small needle to do take care of this part. And I put it, I don't think you'll need your big needle anymore, except for here in a minute, or, yeah, you will need it actually here in a second, so, I'll show you how to weave it in, i show you how to weave it this, so we're just going to weave this tail end in, and I will see you once I get it weaved in, but, so I'm just gonna like go around these loops and back and then uh yeah. So I'll be back with you once I get this tail weaved in. If you don't know how to weave it in, then that's okay. I'm gonna show you when I do the other stuff. So I'll see you in a second. Okay, so remember when I said you wouldn't need this anymore? Actually you do for weaving in the ends a couple of times. Um I've already weaved it in around these loops and tightened it up with a little needle. Now I'm gonna take this big needle and I'm just gonna here I'll show you I can just this will fit through but I just like to do it like this because it's easier for me and you just want to do this make sure the tail that will come through it's not over now you just take this and you want to go down and through and to the bottom and yep then I'm gonna take it off my big needle and Yep, it actually works better for me because the tail's better hidden, and it just feel like it's better weaved in. So, yeah. Anyway, I have this long tail. You're like, what the heck am I going to do with this? Well, good question. You're going to take this, and this hole is, you can untighten a little stick. Like, get a kind of do this and make like a little hole because you can stick cinnamon sticks in here if you're not allergic to it take cinnamon sticks and you can stick them down in this hole or you can just take sticks from outside and put them in there it's winter it's the dead of winter right now and there's a bit of snow outside 
but I'm not going over there just to get the sticks right now. But, I mean, they're pretty like they are like this right now. And I like them like this, so, you know. And I'm trying to make this a short video. I know it's already about 35 minute video because I just checked. <laughs> and you probably think I'm lying. But I just like to leave this in here while I yeah, do that. rest of it. You can use the bigger needle if you want to. You can. Uh, I've never really tried, I don't think. But I do recommend using the little needle because it seems to work better. Big on the bigger needle, you can try. Uh, I might try one day or sometime, but ow, I poked myself. <laughs> yeah, don't do that. But it's not that bad. This one isn't sharp, so it's not that sharp. Now you just want to get it down on there, and acrylic yarn is easier to get on the needle than um, cotton. So you just take it like this, and you kind of like this. I'm trying to get it. This is why the needle not like the needle. Because you want to have enough for putting the lines on it. The bumps. I mean, I don't know why I keep saying lines. But the bumps. This is how I put the bumps on. So. And this you want to definitely sort out. It's a knot on it. So don't pull anything yet until you know. See, it's twisted. That's not what we want. So we're going to it like this and we're going to make sure well you can't see it I know but it's because I'm behind the computer all right and you just make sure that yeah there we go okay and now you can put your lines on so this is the top of the pumpkin this is the bottom and you're just gonna take this and wrap it around and do your lines and you're gonna go very quickly just like this Why a bigger needle might be better. I'm trying to get it through, but it might be best to go like halfway through it, and then like might be best just to go halfway through it, halfway through the hole or the center, then go the other halfway. Do you know what I mean? Like kind of just then you get. Here. And you just pull it. Just pull it. And see, it creates something like this. I don't know if you can see it. See how it's in there? And you can pull it as tight as you want. Literally, it's you. Like, you can make the bumps completely, like, some bigger than others, some smaller than others. And it can be. However you want it to be, because it's for you. You're you're making it. You can customize it. Whoever, if you're making it for somebody, or it's you. You're making it. You know how to do it, and you're doing it the way you want to. So you can customize it however you want. It doesn't matter really. And I think, oh, in the comments, put a pic if you can. Put a picture of your pumpkins. And so I can see them because I really like to see what you guys make and how you make them and what you made them of and what materials. And you can even use cotton if you want. I just don't prefer it because, I mean, cotton is kind of different for this kind of project, I guess you could say. And you just... I just kind of do like this, it's like the tie off we did, and it holds it tight, so then it's made like this, and then you can just take your needle, go over here, it's like a pan, and you're going to make like four bumps, so we only have two bumps right now, you can leave it like that if you like it, but I'm, I like to do at least four bumps or more. 
but I go around like this. <laughs> the center and if you need to center it again just do that I'll center it like that and I will come back to you once I have so many done I'm gonna have like about one two Six, seven, eight. I should have eight bumps. And I will come back to you when I finish it. Okay, so I've done my lines. I know it's turned out a bit smaller. That's because of how tight I did my lines. Well, I don't know why I keep calling them lines, but it turned out good because it's not, it's kind of stretched out. I probably should have put a little less, um, either pulled my lines too tight or I don't know. These are the bumps. I have two, four, six, eight bumps. That's how many I did. Cause you do you keep going. Um, there should be like four, two here. There's one here, one here, and then you go across and then across. If you know what I mean. Um, but you have you're left with this long string, and you're like, but I think I left a lot too long a string. That's okay. You didn't imagine if you left too short of a string, that would be uh, trouble. So then I'm gonna take my bigger needle, and I'm just gonna put the yarn on there. And this is actually just weaving the yarn in, and I'm just gonna try to even it out here. Okay, that's good. Now I just kind of try to weave it in again. I don't like this. And it's hard with the long string, I know it's a lot of pulling, but it'll turn out. And you don't need any other things right now, but I kind of leave it in rough, and now I just, you're like, what do I do? Well, I like to go down in through the pumpkin, like when we start, before we did the bumps, I just like to go down in through the pumpkin. Sometimes they get all tangled a bit. It's just a bit. It's not much. It's just a little tangle. There. And then you can snip the yarn. If you like to save scrap yarns up and have a bunch of knots, like, I mean, it'll be a lot of not really knotty or something. I don't know if you like that, do that, but you can save these scraps and do things with them if you want, like, scrap yarn projects. You can make pom-poms if you have enough. Then, yeah. And... See, I have to make sure this fits in. Eh, no, it's okay. But this is pretty soft. It's not too stretched out, which I like. And these are really easy to make. And you can make the holes as big as you want. I just thought this was a moderate, nice size. And it's smaller than the others. It's about the size of this one, though. This one's a five, I guess, because it came with it. And it feels a bit weird, but, I mean, you can make it. How, really however you want and these are really easy to make but anyway thank you so much for watching don't forget to like share comment and subscribe oh and i'm going to leave my youtube channel link down in the description and don't forget when you subscribe to hit the notification bell and it'll notify you whenever i release a new video or and I don't go live. I might want to get on for, I mean, once I get into this a little more. But I have tons of patterns that I've already, like, I don't have them written. But I don't think you really need a pattern master like you guys are. So just let me know if it turns out or how it turns out and how you did. Put a picture down in the comments below if, uh, or, um, like, just put a picture of your pumpkins that you made. And I really hope you like this video. So thank you so much for watching. And I will see you later. Thank you so much. Bye.